So as usual, we had a high participation rate with a wide range of entries. So what we did is we took, we created a pool of submissions from this session and we combined them with previous requests, grouped them into high level categories and tasks, and then we chose an idea from the po most popular one to demo. But keep in mind, FileMaker will continue holding idea to iPad events in the future. So if your idea wasn't selected this time, just keep submitting them for use as a potential demo uh, in the future. And while your use case may differ from the one that we're gonna demonstrate today, we'll still be covering some common techniques and features that you can apply to your solution. I also wanted to point out that for today's session, we'll be using some advanced beginner techniques and methodology, but don't worry, you'll receive a recording of this webinar later on to follow at your own pace. Now your requests are really similar to the ones that you're seeing on your screen right now, but based on the popularity of your submissions, the winning entry is a job ticketing solution. Now we've been getting a lot of requests for this idea and there's a lot of avenues we could take for building out a workflow. There's most likely gonna be a contact management piece, uh, job tracking, notification functionality, maybe a scheduling feature. And given our time frame, we'll, we'll cover some of that today, but before we start building this out, Let's go ahead and assume that we all work for the same company. We're IT technicians who spend the day out in the field providing maintenance, repairs, and services. Now, let's say that our boss, um, let's go ahead and choose someone from our attendees list. And uh, okay, we'll say that Perry is our boss. Now, Perry knows that every day we're spending too many wasted cycles on inefficient processes managing our work orders or ad hoc processes like double entering information we collect in the field and bringing it back into the office. Now, compounding things are these brand new iPad devices we purchased, but just haven't found a, a good way to incorporate them into our field work. Overall, we're getting results, but Perry knows that we're costing our company time and money. And that's when I get called into his office. Perry knows there has to be a more efficient, more effective way for us to work and communicate in the field. And he's tasked me with the following. Perry wants a solution that we can easily customize to align with our unique workflow out in the field. It's got to be a solution that we can access whenever we want the data from wherever we are. And the solution should also make it easier on our customers too. Now, it's late on the day on Friday, and it's really just not a good time for me to start this project. I have to pick up my kid from school in about an hour, but that's when I remember FileMaker. And the first thing I want to do is make sure I can create a solution that matches how we want to conduct our business. So I'm going to create a brand new database, create a layout designed for the iOS, and then I'm going to use features like fields, relationships, popovers, and portals to optimize our workflow. So let's talk about how we do that. Now, there's a lot of different ways to get started creating a database in FileMaker, but what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to launch my FileMaker Pro Advanced and go up to the File menu and select New Database. So let's go ahead and give this database a name. I'll just call this uh, Job Ticket, and we'll save it to the desktop. Now, right off the bat, we're taken to what FileMaker calls Layout Mode, and this is where we can add objects and fields and change the formatting however we want the interface to look. But I'm going to actually start with a brand new layout. So I'm going to go up to the Layouts menu and select New Layout Report, and we get this uh, fantastic new layout report wizard in FileMaker 13. Okay, so let's give this layout a name. I'm going to call this uh, Job Tickets because that's what we're going to be tracking here. And this is going to be built out for a, a touch device. So I'm going to select iPad or iPad mini. Uh, certainly we could choose a, a computer dimensions or, you know, envelopes or uh, of reporting or labels. But we're going to stick with the iPad mini and uh, we're going to select form. Again, we want to get this out into the field. And then finally, I get to choose, do I want to build this out in a portrait mode or a uh, landscape mode? So I'm going to choose landscape uh, for this layout and click finish. So what happened? Well, FileMaker gave us a layout automatically designed to the dimensions of the iOS device in landscape mode, and it also gave us a touch theme. Now there's 61 themes in FileMaker 13, fully customizable. You can change them however you want, and you'll notice that some of these are marked as touch. So you look at the difference, enlightened to enlightened touch, sophisticated to sophisticated touch. Those touch themes, they have the larger fonts, larger objects like you'd expect on an iOS device. I'm gonna go ahead and just stick with the enlightened touch theme and uh, click okay. So we have our layout 
a really great blank slate to build our custom solution. Let's start personalizing it. I'm going to add some literal text to my layout and um, we'll give this uh, the title job ticket. And let's go ahead and make that font a little bit larger. Right now it's an 18, um, 36 font. Uh, that sounds good. We'll just put that over here. And we also have a company logo. So what I'm going to do is I want this to appear on every single record, every single ticket. So I'm just going to take that image and drag and drop it right onto the layout. That easy. Okay. And this is going to ensure that this picture is now an object associated with the layout. So it's going to appear on every single record. Now we need to get information onto our layouts. And how do we show information? Well, in FileMaker, Information is stored in what we call fields. And new to FileMaker 13 is this fantastic tool called the Field Picker. You can access it right here in the formatting um, uh, toolbar. Okay, and give us one second here. Looks like FileMaker's thinking. Oh, let's go ahead and close that and bring up the uh, ticket database again. All right, let's go back to layout mode. And we have this field picker object, again, brand new to FileMaker 13. And, oh, it looks like our um, text didn't save or our job ticket title didn't save. That's okay. Um, that's because we didn't save our changes to this layout yet. No problem. So I'm just going to go ahead and, again, make this font just a little bit larger. Um, or actually, you know, we need to create our new layout. Put this on a touch device. Um, say uh, job ticket iOS. It's like touch device, iPad mini, form, and again, put it in a landscape mode. There we go. Dimensions, nice. Set to the uh, iOS device and landscape. And again, I'll add uh, the job ticket title here. Okay. We'll make this a bit larger, 36 font. And again, if I want to image directly onto uh, uh, my layout, just a drag and drop, okay? This image is never going to change from record to record, so we're just going to make it part of the layout. That simple. Okay, so back to the field picker. This is a great tool that allows me to add database schema directly from layout mode. It's now uh, more efficient than ever. It's quicker than ever to start designing and building uh, your, your layouts in FileMaker 13. So what kind of objects and what kind of things do I want to track in this uh, ticket solution? First thing I want to do is make sure that each ticket is unique, right? So I'm going to go ahead and uh, give this a... Um, a unique ID field. So I'm going to call this uh, ticket ID. Okay. I just have the uh, two uh, underscores uh, before the um, uh, primary key just to make sure that when I sort the fields, they'll always sort to the top. Okay. And you don't have to have the uh, double underscores. It's just, uh, it's just like a best practice for a formatting or it's just one way that you can uh, format uh, your fields. Okay. So I'm going to change this type from text to number. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and control click or right click if you're on Windows and select field options. All right, because I want to make sure that every time a record is created, okay, I want to uh, insert a, a serial number. Okay, and that makes that's going to ensure that every uh, ticket is unique. And this can be an alphanumeric number uh, if you want to change that as well, if that's how you want to set up your uh, ticketing. But I'm just going to go ahead and stick with uh, this default uh, numeric style. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Okay, so what else do we want to track? Well, uh, we probably want to track uh, the issue. Let's go ahead and change that back to uh, text. Uh, we want to track uh, the uh, request date. We'll change that uh, file format to date. And I'm going to go back to uh, the field options. Again, control click or right click. And I want to make sure that when a record is created, we're automatically going to put the creation date in that field. Again, cutting down on the amount of typing my users have to do. Okay, um, we probably want to track uh, who the ticket is assigned to, which one of our employees is assigned to. So I'm going to change that back to text. And then the status, is it going to be open? Is it completed? Are we still waiting for a customer? And then speaking of the customer, we want to track a lot of the customer information as well. So we'll probably have uh, customer name, customer address, um, customer city, customer state, customer a zip. Again, really easy to add fields in FileMaker 13. And then we probably want to add a site address and a site city 
um, a site state and a site a zip as well because the person who's going to be our contact um, you know they may not always have the same address as the site that we'll be um, visiting uh, for maintenance okay so how do we get our information onto the layouts well it's kind of like what we've already been doing it's just drag and drop so if I want to I can just select a field and uh, I can use the shift key or I can use like the command key for example and and grab a bunch of fields and just drag them directly onto the layout just like that that easy now I'll notice that this kind of takes up a lot of space uh, again we have that larger font larger objects for the iOS and we have a lot of information to track here with the customer information the site information and really the main point of this layout is to really focus on the tasks that are going to be associated with each ticket or the status updates associated with each ticket that's a lot of information a lot of workflow to place onto uh, this layout we have some real estate here that we can work with but um, it may be a tight fit so there's a, a few different approaches you can take that can, you can really optimize the space on your layout one way is by using this tab control feature and tab controls uh, it's exactly what it sounds like where you're putting tabs onto uh, a layout um, or it's kind of like you're stacking folders on a layout as well so we have ticket info um, customer info uh, site info I do a full justification here and click OK. So we can place objects and fields on each uh, tab, and they're only viewable when you click on the appropriate tab. Again, a really nice way to work with uh, the uh, space in your layout. So that's one way to approach it. I'm actually going to use a new feature in FileMaker 13 called popover buttons. And if you're on the web and if you um, have an iOS device, you know what popover buttons are. You just click on a button and you get a brand new window that appears. This is another really new, another great modern way to uh, maximize your space on an iOS device, especially. Okay. So what I can do is just start placing some fields in this area, this popover area, but um, the color scheme is pretty close to the popover button and the background. So the first thing I want to do is let's go ahead and make that just a little bit darker. Okay. So in the inspector appearance tab, uh, there's a gradient on this. So let's just make this a little bit darker again, just so it stands out um, a little bit more. Okay. And we'll stick with the gradient. Certainly you can make it a solid color if you want. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and double click this window and let's give this a title. This is going to be uh, ticket info. All right. Now with ticket info, we're going to break uh, our fields up into different um, categories. So I'm probably going to grab uh, the ID, the um, request date, who is assigned to, and the status. So let's go ahead and bring these fields over onto the layout. All right. And then I'm going to go ahead and realign these fields. And you'll notice these blue lines that appear. That's what we call dynamic guides. They just help you quickly align uh, your objects and fields. So a lot of different approaches that we could take for formatting this particular window. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and give uh, these labels a fill. Okay. And uh, we'll just uh, do some quick formatting on these. So um, appearance, fill, we'll do a solid color so it's white. And then I'm going to go ahead and start making these uh, the same size. Okay, I'm going to bring this out a bit. Make these the same size as the fields they're associated with. All right. Again, using the dynamic guides to quickly align and help out. All right. And our last label, the status. Okay. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and do some formatting uh, with the actual fields themselves. They have a corner radius, so they're a little bit rounded. I'm going to make them square and turn that current, uh, corner radius off. And then I'm also going to uh, remove some of the lines around uh, the uh, fields. I'm just going to keep the left line up to kind of give uh, these fields a bar. So let's go ahead and uh, connect these a bit. And, uh, you know, I'm going to add... Uh, some right padding on these a little bit there as well to give them some space okay so we have a lot of real estate here in this window uh, we can make, probably make this a little bit smaller I, I don't want to block everything in my um, 
in my uh, iOS uh, device. Uh, the layouts are already going to be a little bit smaller that we're working with. All right, so let's move this up a little bit more, and then we should be good on that. Okay. Now, what can we do with these fields themselves? These are going to auto-enter the uh, ticket and the request date for the assigned. Uh, well, let's go ahead and let's change this to a uh, pop-up menu, okay? And I'm going to go ahead and specify a value list for the pop-up menu, and we'll call this employees, all right? Again, just cutting it down on the amount of uh, typing that my users have to do. Now, a best practice would, would involve having a table strictly for uh, my employees and then using a value list comprised of fields from that table. So I could grab, you know, the IDs of the employees and the names of those employees without having to hard code uh, the values. Because um, if people leave, I have to go back to that hard coded list and update that um, uh, every time. So that's the best practice, but for this demo, uh, we're just going to go ahead and hard code uh, some of these names. Um, just uh, this will uh, suffice just again for uh, uh, the, given the time constraint. So we'll just add a few names here. Okay. All right. So that's our employees list of uh, field technicians. All right. And uh, click OK. And let's do the same thing with the status. Again, we don't want to have to type in every time what the status is of uh, the ticket. So we're going to change that to a pop-up menu as well. All right. And we'll call this um, status. And this for this value list, it's okay if we hard code these values. I'm going to say open, completed, and um, we'll say uh, waiting for customer. And click OK. All right. Really good start with our... Um, Pop over button here. All right, we'll just make this a little bit larger. Now, what should we do with the button itself? Um, certainly, we could just have a text label that just says click here, but we want to make a little bit more associatable with uh, what is in the uh, window. I'm going to give a little bit more uh, information on the layout. Now, I could certainly duplicate some of these fields and place it on uh, the button, but what's going to happen is every time I click in that area of the field, it's going to allow a user to uh, enter that field and uh, not trigger that button. And I don't want that to happen. We really just want the values to appear on the button. And there's a great way to do that by using merge fields. So I'm going to go to the insert menu and select merge field. And merge fields, again, this allow you to strictly grab the values in these fields. And they're non-editable um, editable, uh, uh, objects. So this is great for, again, placing text over a button, maybe you have a uh, like a letter layout or like a receipt layout, for example, and uh, you know you don't want people to edit um, that uh, data. You just want that information to be pulled and shown and, again, non-editable. So this is a great way to show that information on your layout. So um, we'll have the ticket ID here, okay, and let's add uh, some literal text just to help point out what uh, that value is, okay. And then we're going to add one more merge field, okay? And uh, we'll say status, okay? So we can get a quick view of uh, this ticket, okay? What's the ID? Is it completed? Is it uh, open? A great uh, way for our text to kind of uh, manage their uh, tickets under their name. So this literal text here, uh, status, okay? So we have a nice button object, but I want to make it even more, I really want it to stand out even more that this button is editable, that you can click on this area and edit some text or find further information. Now, before I do that, I'm actually going to step out of this solution, okay, and I'm going to talk about the FileMaker starter solutions. At the very beginning of... Um, at the very beginning of our presentation, we talked about different ways you can get started uh, working with uh, FileMaker. And we created a brand new database from scratch, but uh, there are also 16 free starter solution templates. They're fully customizable. Uh, they're generic enough to match really any company. So this is a great way to kind of get a head start on your ideas, get some of that development uh, you know, out of the way. And again, you can fully customize them to match uh, your workflow. Um, I also like to use these as uh, repositories and uh, learning tools as well. I'm going to go ahead and open up an uh, invoice uh, solution that I'm currently hosting. That's a starter solution. 
Uh, this is not modified. It just has some dummy data in there, okay? And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and grab this uh, little pencil icon, kind of universal um, icon for um, editing. I'm just going to close that out, and I'm going to bring that back into my layout. So I'm going to just go ahead and paste that. All right. Just another great way to use the starter solutions. I'm going to do one thing with uh, this icon. It is uh, anchored to a stretch to the right. I'm just going to go ahead and change that so it doesn't move across the uh, layout when I uh, resize this. Okay, so a lot of good changes uh, with this uh, button. Let's go ahead and uh, take a look at uh, what we've done. So I'm going to go ahead and exit this layout, okay? And that brings us into browse mode. And browse mode in FileMaker is uh, where you can edit and interact uh, your uh, data. So I'm going to go ahead and click on new record. And right off the bat, the merge field grabs the value in the ticket ID. Remember, we set the ticket ID to be an auto enter uh, number. So I'm going to click on uh, that uh, button. You see that we have the auto uh, generated uh, ticket ID, auto generated request date. Uh, we have a popover. Uh, we can say um, this is assigned to Eric Frazier. And then status, this is an open ticket. This is a really great workflow so for someone in the uh, office who needs to create a ticket. And um, uh, so we can have a nice view for the text to see. Okay. And uh, there we go. That's simple. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and step out of uh, this file uh, for now. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and open up. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open up this job ticket uh, two file that I have. Okay. And uh, actually, I'm sorry. Let me go to this file here. Job ticket two. All right. So a lot of the same workflow, um, just in, again, in um, interest of time, I just went ahead and created uh, the initial uh, buttons. And uh, these buttons have information for uh, the customer fields, and the button on the bottom has information for the site location, okay? And then what I did as well is uh, I, just I just dragged the issue field over onto uh, the layout, and uh, I just made that a, a 24 font, okay? So again, just a lot of the techniques that we've already been discussing, just a lot of the dragging and dropping. All right, so we have some uh, space left open here. And again, we talked about wanting to show the different types of statuses and different type of tasks associated with each ticket. Again, different approaches that you can uh, go with for your database. Uh, one thing I could do is create a text field and you know just start... Uh, uh, having that, just entering a lot of information into that one text field, it, it could be a good approach, but let's say that uh, this ticket lasts weeks and months and a lot of information is going to be stored in uh, that one field. It's not really going to be the best way to organize and manage um, the different things that we're doing for each ticket, having all the information stored in one field. Uh, a better approach, and the approach that we're going to take, is kind of have a repository for all of those tasks. And um, we're going to create a table where, you know, each record in a table is going to be a, um, a task or a status update associated with each ticket. So let's talk about how we would do that. I'm going to go to File, Manage, Database. And there's a lot of different ways you can get to this window. But this window is where you can add additional uh, parts to your database schema. So you can add more tables. You can add fields to those tables. And then really the power of FileMaker, you can create relationships between those tables. And we'll see that in a second. But first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a brand new table and we're going to call this um, services uh, performed. Okay. And uh, click uh, create. All right. So again, this is going to be kind of like a repository. And certainly you could create a table for um, billable objects and a table for, you know, like status um, updates, but we're going to kind of combine them all in one table uh, for this demo. So let's start adding some fields for that services perform table. Again, we want to make sure that each um, record is uh, uniquely represented, right? So I'm going to go ahead and change that type from text to number and click create. And then we'll have the options button. 
And again, every time a record's created, give us a unique number. So we'll do serial number and click OK. All right. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, create a brand new field. Um, we need a uh, key that will allow us to create a relationship to the um, to the tickets table. So we'll call this uh, ticket ID and create. All right. Now, what are the type of things we want to track in the uh, services table? Well, I'm going to go ahead and add another date field, and we're going to change that type to timestamp. Anytime we uh, perform a task or um, you know, if we uh, create an order or if we send a, a receipt, we want to make sure that not only we have the date, we have the timestamp as well. So I'm going to go ahead and create that, and we probably want to make sure that this has an auto-enter uh, value as well. So every time a record is created, we'll auto-enter for that. Then we'll have a description of the service performed. We'll change that back to text. OK, and since we're doing a lot of billing, we probably want to capture uh, the rate, uh, the subtotals and maybe, um, uh, you know, the, the quantity like the hours performed or the quantity of, uh, um, of peripherals purchased and things like that. So we'll add a quantity field and we'll change that to a number and create that. We'll add a rate field and that will be a number as well. And uh, then we'll add a um, subtotal field, okay? And subtotal, this is going to be a, a calculation, all right? We'll click Create. And what you're looking at right now is FileMaker's calculation dialog window. It's everywhere in the software. And all you're really looking at are just the fields associated with the tables, operators, and FileMaker's preset calculation functions which help cut down on the amount of coding that you have to do and all you really do in this window is combine these elements with some literal text to form different expressions that produce different results in this scenario if we want a subtotal of a service all we really need is just the quantity times the rate okay so we'll click OK and then we'll click OK again all right so we Let's go back into the file managed database. All right. So we created our fields and now let's go to the relationships tab. Let's create a relationship be between these two uh, tables. And how do you do that? Well, first thing, before you create a relationship, you always want to look for fields that are going to have common values. And in this scenario, it's going to be the values in the ticket IDs. So all of the services performed that have the ticket ID one, for example, are going to be associated with the first ticket. All the services that have a uh, ticket ID of two, they're going to be associated with the second ticket and so on and so forth. So if I want to create a relationship, again, we're just dragging and dropping. I'm going to take that uh, ticket ID field and drag and drop over to the ticket ID field in the services table. And just like that, we have a relationship in FileMaker. So when the value in the ticket ID field equals the value in the ticket ID field, allows to share those records. So let's go ahead and click OK. Now, how do I get those records to show up in this open space here? Well, we have this tool specifically for that called a portal. And a portal is just a view into another related table's records, OK? A portal into another table. So FileMaker is asking us, where do you want to show related records from? Well, we just created a relationship with the services performed, OK? And I'm going to show a vertical scroll bar and uh, a number of rows will say uh, five and I'll click OK. Now we probably want to add the date, description, quantity and uh, rate and subtotal. But I'm going to cancel this because I'm going to show you that in this field picker tool, you can also grab fields that are not in the current table. Again, just a really quick and easy way to um, build and design your layouts in FileMaker 13. All right, so let's just go ahead and make these a little bit higher. There we go. All right, uh, the timestamp we can make a little bit smaller, and I'll bring the description over. Okay, and then uh, we'll add the quantity, rate, and subtotal. All right, just a little formatting on our layout. Okay, we'll add those there. All right. And we'll make this just a little bit larger. Okay. And we have some real estate at the top, so let's just bring this up a bit. Okay. There's the dynamic guides. 
Okay. And there we go. Again, using the dynamic guys to help me out. Um, let's format these a little bit more, okay? So I'm gonna highlight all of these fields and just to make it a little bit, uh, look a little bit more cleaner in my portal, let's bring up the inspector and uh, go to the appearance tab. Let's make sure that um, the alignment is in the middle and uh, the text is in the middle of the field uh, as well. And then finally, uh, these fields have a, a solid fill and a line. What I'm going to do is, uh, that's the default style of these fields. I'm just going to choose a minimal edit box. That, that way the uh, the fill and the lines are removed uh, and any formatting is removed and it kind of adopts the uh, the background of the portal. Okay, um, Changing that style also changed uh, my uh, alignment, so we'll just quickly uh, change that back. And then the last piece of that is um, just quickly aligning the uh, labels. Okay, again, dynamic guides help us out tremendously here. All right. Now for this rate and subtotal, right now uh, they're just kind of formatted as a standard number, but we can actually change those to a currency. All right. So uh, from the data tab, we change currency and then use the thousand separator. All right. Now let's go ahead and uh, take a look at our changes. Right now we have uh, the portal listed here. Uh, the final piece is back in the file manage database window, okay? Uh, now that we have that portal set up, let's go back into the relationship, all right? And we wanna specify to FileMaker, hey, allow us to create, relation, uh, to create records in that services table based off of that uh, relationship, okay? And this is gonna allow us to add records to the services table directly in the portal, okay? So, um, we'll say uh, label hours, okay? And we have the timestamp automatically created. We'll say uh, the quantity, uh, we worked uh, five hours on this uh, home network. Uh, the rate for that is uh, 40 bucks and uh, FileMaker's calculation automatically um, pulls that in for us, okay? Uh, let's say we have um, ordered a uh, new router, all right? And uh, there's no rate for that, okay? We're not, um, there's no cost associated that uh, for now. And then we have uh, installed a new software that was needed uh, and that he had to purchase. And this is just one, and uh, it was a fairly cheap purchase. It was just um, uh, 20 bucks, okay? And again, this we're adding a task that will perform billable things. We're adding status updates. Again, you could break this up into uh, different tables and different portals if you want, but we're just combining that into one workflow uh, on this uh, layout, okay? Now, wouldn't it be great if we could have FileMaker not just total uh, the subtotal, but total the ticket overall? Well, in order to do that, Let's go back to File Manage Database, and we're going to jump to that services uh, table. Okay, I'm going to create a brand new um, field called uh, Total. I'm just putting a uh, S underscore to label that. This is actually going to be a summary field. Okay, it just helps me format when I um, when I uh, uh, sort uh, fields. You know, it's going to group uh, like um, type fields together. Okay. So we're going to create this summary field, and we have a few different options, but I'm just going to choose the first option. I'm going to say, FileMaker, give me the total of the values in the subtotal fields. So I'm going to click OK, and then click OK. Let's go back to layout mode, because we're going to make a change to that layout. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, use the field picker. Services performed. All right, we'll bring the subtotal onto our layout just like that, and we'll change the label to total, and we'll change uh, this field to have some currency formatting as well. All right, let's take a look at our changes. I'm gonna exit the layout back into browse mode, and just like that, FileMaker has given us a, a complete total of the ticket up to this point. Okay, so what did we do? Well, 
we created a brand new database, a new layout, and then we used relationships, portals, and popovers to create a custom interface designed to meet our needs. Now, we're already starting to solve some of the problems our ad hoc processes have created for us, allowing us to focus on more effective activities. So I'm feeling pretty confident that I can prove to Perry that his first criterion is met. And it looks like we should be out of the office well under the hour, but we still have a few more features and functionality to add. I need to make sure that we can access the solution out in the field. So I'm going to go ahead and host the solution and then access it with FileMaker Go. And let's talk about how we do that. So I'm going to go ahead and um, close that out. All right. And you've already kind of seen me working with FileMaker Server. And what FileMaker Server is, it's strictly a hosting application. It runs the services in the background of your machine. And it's, it essentially acts as you know a way for you to manage your own cloud. Okay. So let's open up this uh, solution. How do you get a solution up into FileMaker Server? Well, there's this great icon called the Share icon. And you're just going to select Upload to FileMaker Server. Okay. And click OK. And I'm going to select uh, my computer. Okay, again, FileMaker Server is running uh, in the background of my computer. I'm just en uh, entering the credentials to FileMaker Server right now. And click Next. Okay, and uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, upload that and upload that database with FileMaker Pro. Okay, now this is the solution that we were originally working with. We were just working with Job Ticket Two. Uh, you can see if we go to File Open Remote, if I ping that uh, uh, server machine. We'll see uh, the Job Ticket 2 database we we're also working with. So it's just a really quick way to access your uh, files uh, remotely. Okay. Now, how do we get this over onto an iOS device? Well, in order to show you, I'm going to go ahead and launch my Reflector app. Okay. And this is going to allow me to um, it's going to allow me to display the iPad I have in my hands right now over onto the screen. So just give me one second to do that. Okay, and there's the iPad. You'll see at the bottom you have FileMaker Go icon. Again, that's a free download off the App Store. But I'm going to go ahead and tap on FileMaker Go. All right. And uh, this is FileMaker Go 13. You have a few different icons in the upper left corner. Recent shows the recent server machines and databases that I've been working with. If I tap on the device icon, this shows the... Um, this shows the recent, uh, or this shows the files and documents I have stored locally on this device. So this is a really great way to work with your solution offline in an area with a bad network connection or no network connection at all. And then when you have a network connection, you can push those changes up to the hosted uh, server. And then if I tap on the host icon, this allows me to access external servers or it allows me to access uh, servers that are uh, on my local area network. And you can see we have quite a few um, applications hosting FileMaker uh, databases right now. I'm just going to go ahead and scroll through that list and you'll see right about the top Ryan Manook's FileMaker server. So I'm going to go ahead and tap on that. Let's give one second for that to populate and we scroll through that list. There's a job ticket to database we were working with. So I'm going to go ahead and tap on that. Okay. And there you go. The FileMaker solution. Pretty much as close as possible as you can get. And if we tap on some of the functionality like that ticket, all right, the popovers work just like expected. And uh, we can uh, interact with the, uh, portal object as well. Now let's take that a step further. Let's say that we're working with Doug. Okay. And he uh, wants to update his email address. Okay. So uh, the uh, I, uh, i2i.com uh, domain uh, email is just uh, not the best way to reach him. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that uh, to just uh, email.com. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and tap those and uh, commit those changes. All right. Now let's take a look at the FileMaker Pro side. Okay. You look at the email, it automatically shows uh, the change. Again, everywhere, anyone who's accessing this, Mac, Windows, iOS, even a web browser, everybody's going to see that change um, from Doug's email. Now let's take that a step further. Let's say that I'm working with Doug. Okay. And I'm in the middle of uh, changing his email, okay? 
Uh, we're in the middle of changing it to uh, email.com. Now, at the same time, we have an admin in the office, okay? And the admin is the one who uh, takes the tickets and creates the tickets, right? And uh, the admin notices that uh, Doug's contact number is also uh, not up to date. Now, watch what happens when the admin tries to make a change at the same time uh, we're trying to make a change to this record out in the field, okay? So I'm going to click on the uh, phone uh, field from the desktop, and I'm going to click on delete. We get this message pretty much saying, hey, you cannot modify this record because someone else is already modifying this record. We call that automatic record locking. It's right out the box, nothing to configure. So what does that mean? Well, that means that you can have hundreds, thousands of people looking at your records, but only one person can modify a record at a time. So it guarantees that when you're working with FileMaker, you're always going to be working with one version of the truth. So what did we do? And really just two things. It was just hosting the solution and connecting to it with FileMaker Go. And really that's just a minute without me talking, right? So we're making great progress, but I just need to make sure I can figure out a way to make sure our customers directly benefit from this tool as well. I mean, wouldn't it be great if we could just send an email or a receipt while we're standing right next to them? So I'm going to create a script that saves our records as PDFs and then emails a copy of that to the customer. So let's talk about how we do that. I'm going to go ahead and hide this reflector, okay? Anytime we're making database schema changes, it always happens in the FileMaker Pro side. I'm actually going to close this job ticket too as well. I'm going to bring up a third version of that file, okay? So let's go ahead and open up uh, the job ticket three. You might have seen that as, of, as I've been going through uh, this window, okay? Now, what I've done in job ticket three, all I've, all I've done is created a brand new layout using the skills that we've already been doing, okay? And this, again, just in the interest of time. So if I go into layout mode, um, I'm just using a portal just like we created, uh, the uh, totals there, and then I'm using merge fields to uh, populate some information. Um, uh, these fields right here are merge fields as well. I just have them tightly bunched because the state, uh, for example, is going to take up two characters. So I have uh, some of these uh, bunched together, okay? Um, and again, this is a great use case for merge fields. This is a layout that I don't any, I don't want anyone really uh, touching or have the ability to kind of edit the information. I just want the values to appear on this uh, this layout meant for printing, right, or or being saved as a PDF. Okay, so a lot of the same um, uh, skills that we use. This is still pulling from the tickets table. It's still I'm still using the relationship to the services table. This is just another layout, just another view into uh, into those tables and into that relationship. Okay, I also designed this layout uh, with page margins in mind. So I use view page margins. That way, when we save it as a PDF, uh, all of uh, this information is going to be uh, stuck within. Uh, that page or visible within that page okay so how do we send this out to customers all right well let me go ahead and go to uh, the scripts menu because we're going to need to uh, create a script actually let's go to uh, the tickets uh, layout just for some context because this is where we're going to fire off that script now if you're not familiar with scripts or the idea of scripts they're just an instruction list that produces results okay and typically you want to create scripts to handle um, repetitive uh, tasks, uh, repetitive and tedious tasks, things that you know you just want automated. Like for example, if you want to create a, a receipt, certainly I could find um, uh, the appropriate receipt, then I could uh, save it as a PDF manually, and then I could uh, write an email uh, manually and attach that PDF to the email manually. But do I want to do that every time I'm with a customer? That's something I probably want to automate. OK, so just think of it as an instruction list set, like if you're getting ready in the morning, if you um, getting ready in the morning, like a, you would follow a script. You, you wake up, you stretch, you get out of bed, you walk to the bathroom, you brush your teeth. Those are all steps involved with getting ready in the morning. And that's what you do when you create a script. You tell FileMaker, these are, just, these are the steps I want you to follow to produce a result. So getting started with a script. First thing, I'm going to give it a title. I'm just going to call uh, email receipt. OK, now on this job tickets right now, we only have five records, um, pretty easy to navigate, but this is going to expand. We could have, um, you know, hundreds and hundreds of uh, ticket requests 
right? So I want to make sure FileMaker knows that when I fire off the script, uh, it needs to know the exact ticket that I want it to uh, print out for. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the set variable script step. The set variable script step allows me to capture a dynamic value. We don't want to hard code that we're always going to be on ticket one because that's not always going to be the case, right? We may want to uh, print out the receipt for ticket 10 or ticket 18 or ticket 97. Setting a variable is going to allow us to capture that dynamic value. So I'm going to go ahead and um, give this variable uh, a name. I'm just going to call it uh, receipt number. Okay, and then uh, for the value, I'm just going to tell FileMaker, hey, grab the value that's in the ticket ID. Okay, so grab this value right here. All right, so click OK. Once I grab the, um, the uh, appropriate uh, ticket value, then I'm going to tell FileMaker, okay, now that you know the ticket value, go ahead and jump to the receipt layout. Okay, jump to the receipt layout, and then I need to tell FileMaker, hey, now that you're on the receipt layout, make sure you jump to the appropriate ticket that um, I was just on. And in order to make sure that happens, I'm just going to do a find. I'm going to tell FileMaker, hey, perform a find for that ticket. So we're already on the receipts layout. Then we're going to do a perform find. Okay, and we're going to tell FileMaker, hey, when uh, the ticket ID uh, equals the value in uh, the receipt number variable, okay, uh, click add and uh, click OK. Uh, those are the uh, results I want you to produce. Okay, so find me uh, the record that matches this uh, ticket value. Okay, and then once we're on the appropriate record, we need to create a file name for what we're going to uh, produce for the PDF or receipt that we're going to produce. So again, the file name could uh, it could be very dynamic, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, choose the set variable script step again. Okay, so I'm going to choose uh, set variable. We're just going to give this uh, file name. Okay, and then uh, the value. I'm going to add some literal text. I'm going to say this is a receipt, the underscore, and then I'm going to add, um, you know, I, I want to add the date. So uh, it just kind of uh, distinguishes which receipt it is. Okay, so I'm going to use a, a get function. Um, get current date. Now, what's going to happen if I use this in my um, script or in my uh, calculation? Uh, FileMaker is going to grab the current date uh, like so, 12-9-2014. Uh, uh, okay, that is today's current date, so that is appropriate. But since this is going to be a file name, and this is pretty much going to be like a file path. And FileMaker is going to be looking for you know, a folder or a directory called 12, followed by a folder directory called 9, followed by a folder directory called 2014. So we actually need to remove those, okay? And I'm actually going to substitute those with underscores, kind of like what we're doing with uh, the receipt here. So we still want that get current date function, but we're going to combine it with the substitute function. So let's go ahead and scroll down and bring up the substitute function, okay? And I'm going to say uh, substitute in uh, the current date, find uh, the slashes and replace those with underscores. Okay, now we're no longer confusing FileMaker. And then finally, uh, we'll add some literal text again, add .pdf, all right, to make sure that we have the proper uh, file extension. Okay, so it's going to be uh, receipt underscore 12 underscore 9, 12 underscore 2014, um, dot PDF. That's going to be the uh, end result. So we'll click OK. All right. So now that we have a file name, I'm going to tell FileMaker to go ahead and save those records as a PDF. Okay. I'm going to put the output uh, file as uh, the uh, file name. Now we're doing this for the iOS. We're out in the field. Uh, just a heads up. If you're doing this out, uh, if you're I uh, wanted to create this workflow for users on uh, the desktop. Um, you know, you would specify uh, the uh, actual output uh, location. So you would say, okay, put this in the desktop, put this in um, a particular folder in a directory. On the iOS device, uh, we have no control over where it goes. It just goes into FileMaker, goes documents folder. So we don't need to specify that. Okay. So it's just going to save it. Uh, where it saves it and you know we're okay with that okay so we're giving it a name we're telling FileMaker go ahead and save that PDF all right 
Now we need to tell FileMaker, okay, uh, this is exactly where that PDF that was saved is located. All right. So we're going to do another variable, okay? Because it's always going to change in terms of the name. That's what's going to make it change. So we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to call this uh, PDF path, okay? And then uh, the PDF path is just the uh, get document path. Oops, get documents path um, function. And then the uh, file name uh, variable, okay? So create a file, then save that PDF under the file name where you uh, store it by default. And then, hey, FileMaker, that's actually stored at the documents path, and I want you to grab uh, the, this particular file, okay? All right, so FileMaker knows which file to grab. We just need to attach it to a mail. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and use the send mail script. Okay, a script step, and uh, we have a few options. And I'm going to choose uh, to have FileMaker automatically enter the customer email. I don't want to have to type this in every single time. Okay, so FileMaker automatically grab the value in that uh, customer email. Uh, for the subject, I'm just going to add some uh, literal text. Okay. And uh, messages, we'll just skip that for now. And then for attached file, okay, I'm going to put in uh, the PDF uh, path. Okay. And click OK. All right. Let's do a perform without dialogue right here. Okay. Let's go ahead and save the script. And now I need to put this onto my uh, ticket layout. So I'm going to go ahead and edit the layout. And I'm going to go ahead and add a uh, button. We use popover buttons, but I'm going to use a regular button here. Okay. And uh, we'll say um, perform the email receipt script. Okay. And it's going to say send uh, or let's say email receipt. That's better. All right. Just align that a little bit better with the total. Okay. And then. Um, just for some added color, let's go ahead and use FileMaker 13 styles to um, change the color of that button. Um, yeah, the, the blue button is fine. Just, again, add some, a little bit of color to our layout. Okay, so let's go ahead and save that uh, layout back in browse mode, and then let's go ahead and bring up our iOS device, okay? Again, I'm going to launch Reflector and then bring that over onto my screen. Just give me one second to do that. All right, there it is. Okay, okay, we're currently in job tickets too, so let's close that. All right, let's go back to Ryan Minook's FileMaker server and open up job tickets three. Okay, there's the layout that we we're just working with. I'm gonna go ahead and tap that uh, email receipt button. Okay, and an email appears, we have Doug's uh, email automatically associated to the to field. The subject automatically uh, has our literal text. And then you see that receipt uh, PDF um, uh, that we created and attached to the email. Again, just like we expected on an iOS device. Uh, one important note about uh, this particular feature, if you want to build that functionality out, um, if you create multiple receipts in one day, using uh, it, found make, or uh, the iOS device will create um, a, an appended uh, number, so like 1, 2. So this would be receipt 12924-1 uh, and then dash 2, dash 3, dash 4. So that's something that you want to um, uh, you want to parse, you want to capture. Uh, you could have a field, um, like a global field dedicated to the amount of uh, receipts generated in a day and then append that to uh, your script um, and your variables so you know which one to actually pull for. Okay. Okay. So what did we do? Well, we created a script that saved our records as PDFs, and then we emailed a copy to the customer. So there's still a lot that we could build on if we wanted to. Um, using a similar approach with portals, we could create a view for each one of the texts so they can see which open tickets are associated with them. We could create a table to manage our clients, or maybe we could start fleshing out the point of sale system that we just started hinting at. 
But really, in just about 40 minutes, we've created a fantastic little tool that has already started to impact the business. So for the field reps, our day-to-day -day has become much more efficient. But what does Perry have to gain? Well, think about how just one rep can affect the top line by fitting in one more customer visit a day, one more customer contact a day, and then roll that into the week and roll that over a month or the year. And then look at the impact across the entire team. Okay, so I'd like to open this up to Q&A. looks like we have some really good uh, queue set up for uh, the questions already. Um, again, go to the control panel, click on the question section, enter your question, and click on send. We'll try to get as uh, many as we can. And if you haven't already, let's give you some time to do so. I'm going to talk about some great resources as a follow-up uh, to these webinars. Uh, the first resource, the FileMaker Training Series, this is recently released. We have two options, the basics and the advanced. And the basics books, it's free to download. Get it off our website, get it off iBooks, okay? Free download, advanced $19.99 uh, for the uh, download, $39.99 for the hard copy. This is FileMaker's official training curriculum, and it's also uh, a great resource for the path to, cert uh, to certification. If you have any interest in becoming a FileMaker developer, or just sharpening your developer skills. Again, FileMaker Go 13, free to download. Get it off the App Store. If you do so, remember to download FileMaker Pro 13 trial like you saw today. Uh, the um, building your solution, the database schema, uh, and the layouts uh, can only happen on uh, the desktop uh, client side. Uh, you have additional FileMaker web seminars, a really great um, uh, free resource content in there. Uh, if you have any interest in taking your ideas over to the web, uh, there's a great best tips and practices uh, webinar. And then uh, for all your ideas, all your solutions, uh, we just came out with um, uh, a webinar uh, presented by one of our business partners. It talks about how you can get the maximum performance out of your solutions. I think that's a, a fantastic resource for you to uh, check out. And then if you're ready to uh, purchase, give us a call at 1-800-725-2747 or go to the URL that you see at the top of your screen. We have a fantastic annual volume licensing agreement um, uh, program. FileMaker is starting as low as $9. A FileMaker server as low as $29. Again, give us a call. We'd love to chat with you uh, to see if FileMaker is a good fit for you or, or just to discuss how uh, FileMaker can be deployed for uh, your solution. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into uh, the Q&A. Uh, looks like um, we have a little bit of time left, but uh, you know I don't want to shut you guys out of your questions, so we'll answer as uh, many as possible. Okay, uh, the uh, first question, uh, how much work would it be to add Google Maps to the ticket layout? This is a fantastic question, especially for... Um, uh, especially because it, it makes sense in terms of what we were talking about in terms of or what we were designing with, you know, the customer addresses and the site addresses. Uh, wouldn't it be fantastic for uh, the, for our our, uh, our field team to just kind of look at the solution, okay, see a ticket and then get some quick directions to where they need to go next. Okay, so actually in uh, FileMaker, let's go ahead and uh, uh, do the solution open up here, okay. We have uh, this tool called uh, a web viewer, okay? And a web viewer allows you to uh, show a, um, a web browser directly on your layout, okay? And here's a web viewer setup window. You can choose uh, some uh, preset URLs or uh, you can create your custom URL as well. And you'll notice the first one, Google Maps, I can actually specify fields from my FileMaker um, uh, records, right? Or my FileMaker table. So I could say, hey, FileMaker, go ahead and uh, grab the value in the customer address field, uh, grab the value in the uh, customer city field, and so on and so forth. And you see that the uh, URL is, all, is dynamically adding these um, uh, to, uh, or to the URL. So what that means is that as I go through the records, it's going, the uh, web browser is going to dynamically change the location for uh, each site. Okay. So it's a really good question, and it really ties well into uh, where we could start taking this uh, little uh, tool next. Okay, um, the next question. Uh, is it better hosting uh, using FileMaker Server or use locally on the iPad and sync back later? This is a fantastic question. Um, you always want to host with FileMaker Server. You know, that's always going to be the hub of your solution. But if you're going to be out in the field, 
it, it's always good to just have a backup copy um, on uh, on the device, okay? So it doesn't have to be either or, all right? You don't just have to work locally and sync back later or just work on FileMaker Server. If you have a network connection, then um, by all means, I would say just continue working with FileMaker Server because you're getting updates in real time, okay? If anyone else needs to see that data, you know, they're getting updates in real time. So um, if I have a network connection, I'm connected to FileMaker Server, but I wouldn't approach a, um, uh, you know, a job out in the field uh, with a, an either or mentality. I would be prepared uh, for both. Good question. Okay. Um, and that, we actually have another question kind of tied to that. Um, would you recommend using FileMaker Go in the field, but with limited Wi-Fi? Again, put it on the device. Um, and, uh, you know, sync back later. Let's talk about syncing back. Okay, FileMaker, just to make sure we're on the same page, doesn't have a, a native sync feature. So there's not like a feature that you can just uh, uh, turn on and off that says sync these to uh, my records. What you're working with is pretty much an imported uh, or a scripted import. Okay. Um, so you're, you're, you're writing a script that imports your uh, records into the hosted file and importing your changes into the hosted file. If you're working with uh, records or creating records that no one else is going to update, that's a straightforward import. If you're going to be working on records that other people are going to be working with at the same time while you're offline or they're offline, then you're going to have to incorporate some business logic. Who's, who's, um, uh, updates are going to keep. Is it based off of um, time? Is it based off of who they are in the company and things like that? Okay. So if you want to tackle that uh, yourself, we have a great FileMaker Go sync guide. It's available for free on FileMaker's um, TechNet uh, website. TechNet is a free to join program. Uh, everyone here uh, who's attending, if you're not already, you absolutely should. Again, it's free. You get access to a bunch of great white papers, a bunch of great uh, videos and tutorials, and also uh, another um, a forum site, which uh, kind of goes into a little bit more heavier development and things like that. So it's a fantastic resource um, that uh, you should definitely take advantage of. But you can get that uh, sync guide uh, off of TechNet. Now, there are software out there that kind of take that responsibility of creating that script out of your hands. So off the top of my head, if you're ready um, to write it down, but 360 works, uh, Mirror Sync, uh, Seed Codes, uh, GoSync. Uh, there's another um, software that just came out, uh, EasySync. I forget the developer of that, but uh, again, those uh, kind of take the responsibility of writing that script to import uh, out of your hands and you can just uh, you know uh, deploy with uh, their solution. OK, so again, you're either writing the script yourself or using third party software to sync that information back to uh, your uh, hosted solution. Again, there's going to be a level of complexity there. So uh, you just want to approach that one um, carefully. OK, um, the next question, uh, how do we get the um, how do we get this solution onto uh, the iOS device? for areas with uh, bad network connections? Uh, good question. Uh, we didn't really touch on this too much. We just talked about how you can have it on there, but to get it over onto the layout, all you, or over onto the iOS device, you have a few ways. Use iTunes. You can email it to yourself. You can use a third-party software like Dropbox, for example, uh, or you can put it up on a website and then download it. All right, a lot of great questions. Uh, a uh, recording of this will be sent to you um, and you can also be able to find it on that filemaker.com forward slash support forward slash webinars page. Um, thanks for sticking around. I know we ran a few minutes late. And on behalf of FileMaker, it was my absolute pleasure chatting with you guys today. And I hope to see you on another webinar soon. Thanks.